Okay, hey everybody, welcome back. So, here's where I am so far in the field that I shot on the side of the road here in Sarasota, Florida. And it's obviously not perfect by any, um, you know, stretch of the imagination. But, you know, for Gorilla VFX, uh, just kind of throwing everything together, um, you know, so far so good, you know. There's a little bit of sliding around that, you know, that we could adjust, uh, you know, with the track and, and stuff like that. But, again, we're, this isn't really talking too much about sliding here. We're talking or, or tracking or match moving. We're mostly just talking about getting things in the comp and lighting it to, as if uh, you were actually there. So everything here is basically lit uh, from the sunset that was in that park. Now, yes, it's only running at 10 FPS at the moment, 10 frames per second. But what I'd like to do now before we actually add sound and see it in full motion, something like that, is let's take a look at just what I built here in the Nuke script itself. Just kind of take it piece by piece. And uh, just to go from the very beginning to the very end, uh, and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do with some of these characters in here in the corner here that I'm not a fan of, and let's see if we can kind of cover up some of their shaky animation and stuff like that, okay? One of the things I really love about Nuke, uh, especially compared to After Effects, is in After Effects you may be scrolling up and down trying to find what layer something is on, or they really need to start grouping things I know you can do pre-nestled composition or what they call pre-comping, which isn't really uh, the correct term, I don't think. But that's only my opinion. But more on that uh, in another time. But what's nice about Nuke is if you have a kind of a complicated shot, you can zoom way back. Like we are like, you know, a mile or two miles up from the whole script. And you can get like a, like a bird's eye view of everything and then zoom back in to the parts that you really want to concentrate on. So that's really nice to have that kind of global control. Over here, this is just the tracking information that I did for the shot. And again, we're not gonna talk much about that, but what's really nice also about Nuke is that you can group things and then put a, a label on it, like everything over here is an alpha channel for the sky. Smoke pillars, background elements, right? The police lights, um, eye glows, the actual skeleton, you know, renders themselves. So it's pretty handy to kind of just do that and it really helps especially. You know, you're either going to come back to your comp in a week or two or you're going to hand this off to someone else who's going to, who needs to make an adjustment and it's really nice to, to put labels down on everything. Uh, so let's actually just take this real quick step by step just to show you what I did. Here is of course the original iPhone footage. Now again, I put this into our Topaz AI to kind of clean up a little bit of the compression and the artifacts, but basically it's pretty much the same footage and I just kicked it out to EXRs and it's using an input transform of Rec 709 because that's what my monitor is at. But basically there it is right there. And I know the first thing I'm going to have to do, especially right over here, is establish a mat for the sky. i got to cut out the trees to the sky, right? So we can put more background elements in there. And, you know, you always try and think of what you can do before you start rotoing anything, okay? And really all a key is, is basically just pixel contrast. So if you have any kind of tricks up your sleeve about establishing any kind of pixel contrast, that's your first kind of go-to. And, you know, people say, well, I need a blue screen or a green screen or a clean plate. Before you look to any of that stuff, you should just look to see, is there a contrast in illumination values? Is something bright versus dark? something I could pull a key on that's just difference in illumination. And basically they call that a, a illumination or a loom map. And that's what I figured I would do on this because the trees are dark and the sky is bright. Perfect opportunity to do a luma mat, right? And I'm not going to just grab like any of the luma mat tools or anything like that. I like to actually pull keys just using color correction. And all we're looking to achieve, of course, is a black and white traveling mat. So I'll show you what I did. Zooming over here, all it is I separately shuffled out the blue channel and the red channel, although this one is actually renamed. Let's put this red. There we go. So the blue channel looks like this one. The red channel looks like that one. The reason I didn't use the green channel is because I'm looking for the highest density of contrast. And these two have a lot of contrast in their channels, especially the blue. See how dark that is and the red? Well, if you take both of these and just plus them together, you're going to get something already pretty bright. All I'm doing is I'm just reshuffling the channels. I didn't really damage any pixels yet, right? And I already have a much stronger contrast compared to if I just went over here and desaturated everything just like this. This as a desaturate compared to 
just selectively putting channels back together and just adding them both together. Really quick switch and you're off to a really good start, right? So with these two channels put together, and I'm gonna turn off that, and I'm just gonna quickly go through a lot of these stuff I did here because a lot of it is pretty redundant. You may look at a, a big script and you may say, wow, that's really complicated. But odds are it's probably doing like the same five things over and over again. So it's really not complicated at all, right? So on this black and white image, basically my new mat that I'm going to use, uh, I just did a simple color lookup right over here. And what I did with this curve is I said, hey, basically anything that is in a pixel value above, I don't know, four and a half, I just clamped it and made it white. You could probably use a clamp to do this too, but I like to use the, the curves because it gives you a lot of control over that. And so what this color lookup does is it basically just gives you even more contrast selectively on the on the histogram so to speak right and then I multiplied all the pixels against each other as well with a value of 1.8 and what's great about multiplying is is that the dark colors are going to stay pretty dark and the light colors are going to get even brighter right so multiply is really good to kind of keep the low end somewhat stable and push the high end further up now there is some roto but the only roto is basically rotoing out the ground because again with a key with any kind of pulling a key you don't care what's on the inside, known as the holdout, and you don't care what's on the outside, known as the garbage, okay? You're only looking for the edge, and the edge of any key is the majority of the work, the lion's share of the work. Don't concentrate on trying to get little details inside. That stuff can be handled really quickly. So a quick roto right here knocks out basically everything as a holdout, and then the, another roto up here on the sky is basically going to take anything, and I zoom down, anything that is still getting dark because it was like a vignette -y kind of sunset day, and that's going to push that right back up to one. So we're already getting a pretty good traveling mat right here. Now again, of course, anything that's gray in here is going to be semi-transparent, but with trees, you know, you kind of see through trees a little bit. So you know, it may be passable. Then I clamp everything down. The reason I clamp everything down, of course, because if you go through and you look at some of your pixel values on, on this stuff, and here are the pixel values right down here, which is also a really nice feature that I wish After Effects would, would kind of incorporate a lot more of. I have a negative pixel value on my alpha channel. Over here, I had uh, negative pixel values going on in my blacks and stuff like that. And you don't want anything that is below zero or above one in any of your mats, right? So you clamp it, clamp it. So basically everything is between zero and one. And now just looking at this, I have basically perfectly white and perfectly black. And if your alpha channel is above one, like the white is above one, you're gonna get some, you're actually gonna get a darker mat. You're gonna get some black fringing and that's really not what you want. Then I took this erode right here and I eroded it down pretty heavily. I butchered it down pretty heavily and then blurred it out, reformatted it down. And just to see what that kind of looks like, bringing that back into the comp itself, I added a quick sky vignette. So the sky vignette right up here just basically darkens up our scene in the corners a little bit. Reformat everything down from, I think it was shot at 4K to HD. And then for example, this smoke here, which I'll get to, just adding in the smoke and let's jump right over here to the beginning and there's our smoke right so turning off you know our smoke back and forth so yes it is going over the trees a bit and it's not ideal but with motion blur and with moving quick odds are you know there's probably going to be a skeleton head in front of it most of the time anyway it's not going to be a big deal okay so that's how I basically pulled the quick key quick and dirty key on that background footage Let's talk about the smoke. 